You can tell if a man's lying by looking right into his eyes. Was I lying when I said that? As a matter of fact, I was. The eye test won't work with a good liar, and you may find that out tonight. People are funny. The eminent Irish philosopher Patrick Michael McGeehan once said, Well, if you're richer, you're poor. It's always nice to have money. Especially if you win it on people are funny. And let's find out if Pat's philosophy is true about money because here, are $10,000 in cash in this little wheelbarrow. And here is the couple who may find out that it's better to have money than nothing. And this is our very charming young couple who were introduced in this program three weeks ago. Our pretty little blonde is Virginia Meyer. And the handsome brunette is Mr. Ed Hakim, H-A-K-I-M. And you met for the first time on this stage, set eyes on each other three weeks ago. Three weeks ago. So you filled out our questionnaire. We put it in the UNIVAC, and the 32 important questions about your background, likes, dislikes, and interests went whizzing past thousands of men. And the one that UNIVAC decided was closest to your interests and desires was Mr. Ed Hakim. And Ed, your business is... Uh, Advertising art. How have you two been getting along uh, after the show hours these last few weeks? Oh, just fine, Art. What do you find your special interests are in common? Oh, I think we, we do a lot of dancing and... Um, we like to sing and act and uh, work out things together like that. I had an open house recently, a party, you know, and uh, Ed was a very big help. He really kept the party going. And uh, we found that we had fun working out variety acts. And uh, <laughs> I don't know about my cooking, but he's an excellent uh, opener of champagne bottles. Well, they both have the answers. I can go no further than this. And here is my answer. <laughs> money, which smooths the way to many a difficult problem. And this money will be yours, 20,000 in all. This is 10,000 tonight, if you play our anagram game, which you've had some practice at. So let's go over now that we've heard about you, met you, and found out about the romance, which is really the interesting part of this stunt. And look at four, five letters, T-S-R-A-E, two vowels and three consonants. Now, if you can make the right word you can win $10,000 and take it and leave it tonight if you wish. Go away with it. Behind one of these letters is the figure one and behind the other four are the figures zero. So if you make the right word with the right letter in the front with the letter one behind it, the figure one behind it, it would be 10,000. If the mysterious letter is second in the word you make, it's 1,000 or 100 or 10 or $1. Ed, Virginia, change those letters around any way you wish. T-S-R-A-E. Have you got a word? With a couple of words we can think of now. Well, change one and let's take a look at it. You can make another change if you want to. Uh -huh. We're going to... Uh, S-T-A-R-E. Stare. Now, that is a word, all right. And uh, if the S has a one behind it, you would have had $10,000. Or if it's the one behind the E, you'd have $1. Now, do you want to change this word? There's rates as a word. R-A-T-E-S, that's another word, rates. Well, what do you say? You've gotten them all, all the letters. All right, they've made up their mind. Change it around any way you wish. R in the front. R in the front. She says, wait. No. They're going to get a little, they look like they're married already. She's telling them what to do, and he's saying, not on your life. R A T E S. That's the word. Time's up. This is the word, all right. Do you agree, Virginia? She's got her uh, doubts. 
Well, so have I, for that matter. All right, let's see now. You see, the idea of this game is to show them how they work together as a team, and as you can see, they work together beautifully. <laughs> let's start with uh, the middle one. Let's start with the letter T. If the one is back here, you've won $100. It's a zero. And then we'll work this way from it with the E. The one's back here, it's 10. Let's work the other way. If it's A, you've won $1,000. Well, this makes a very interesting word. Great, R-A-T-E-S. Now they have won either $10,000 or $1. All right, now, as we have done in the past, we leave it up to your decision. You can either think so surely that you've got 10,000 here that I go ahead and give you whatever you get. Or if you're not sure, you can come back once more only and try for $20,000. There's advantages and disadvantages each way. Next week might be harder. You might be less sure. On the other hand, it gives you another week. Now what, I'll tell you, since you've gone this far, if you come back, I'll give you this one extra thing. If you come back after this many weeks and lose and don't get the big prize, Whatever you do get, we'll also give you, either separately or together, a trip to Paris, France. In other words, if you get married, you can go as a honeymoon on United Airlines, the radar line, and United's red carpet service to New York, and then aboard a luxurious KLM Royal Dutch airliner for the finest in overseas flying to Paris. I'd like to come back next week. Paris is wonderful anyhow. Yes, and besides, look what you would have gotten if you'd have done it. $10,000. So he was right, and Virginia, you were wrong. The one was back of the R. What word did you want, Virginia? No, no that's right. You wanted this. You knew you had it. You were sure. Well, what was all the yakking going on over there? $10,000 you would have won, but next week it could be $20,000. And in the meantime, how would you like to dine tonight? with the movie stars. <laughs> like it very much. All right, we are going to give you uh, 50 cents, <laughs> don't laugh, and two soda straws. You can take her to Schwab's drugstore. That's where the stars dine. And again, it's Sunday, and we'll see you next week. Goodbye, kids. Any one of these three men could be a member of the United States House of Representatives, but only one is. The others are a service station attendant and a press agent for Ringling Brothers Circus. Ladies and gentlemen, we're about to play our famous people are funny game, where we ask a contestant out of the audience to detect which one of three people is telling the truth about who he is and what he is. Now, I'd like our guest to come out. We've selected a lady out of the audience. I haven't met you up until right now. Would you tell me who you are? You want my name? Yes. Lillian Gelfin. Where are you from, Lillian? Brooklyn, New York. And what do you do? Insurance business. Oh, in other words, you're a professional career woman. Oh, well, yes, I guess so. So you're used to uh, analyzing and making oh, your own yes. judgments. Only I'm, I'm co uh, I collect money. You're a money collector. Well, people, that's even better. People that don't pay their insurance premiums. Ah, so you have a real suspicious eye. <laughs> because that's good. Tonight we have three men, two of whom are going to lie and one of whom is going to tell the truth. And the one of these three men is a congressman of the United States House of Representatives. One operates a service station and one is a circus press agent. Now, for $1,000 in cash, which is what you get if you select from these three men the one who is a member of the United States House of Representatives, Without ever hearing them talk, which one do you think is the gentleman? The center man. The center man. Mr. McGeehan, would you put on the silk hat which indicates her prior choice of this particular gentleman? That's merely to remind us of which one you thought, because we may give you another chance. 
And now, gentlemen, I would like to ask you some questions, and then we'll give this lady a chance to listen to you and perhaps change her mind. Our first gentleman I will speak to, how do you like living in Washington? Well, I like uh, visiting Washington, but I don't think I'd like to live there permanently. Mm -hmm. You wouldn't like to live there permanently? I don't believe so. On what committees do you serve in Congress? I serve on the Education Committee and the Labor Committee and the District of Columbia Committee. What are your hobbies, Congressman? Well, I like to uh, get outdoors, like to hunt and fish and go camping, go to the beach, get outdoors whenever possible. You don't get much of that in Washington, do you? Oh, you can get some of that in Washington, I guess. Mm-hmm. A lot of fishing, I guess. Yes. <laughs> what do you think is the most important action a congressman can take in behalf of his people? I believe the most important action a congressman can take is to vote for economy so the folks can have a tax cut and uh, stop the growing size of the government. I think it's getting too big and interfering too much in people's affairs and uh, a lot of waste. So I think vote for economy is the best. Uh, now, of course, everything he may be saying may be uh, the truth or he may be uh, coached to lie. You remember that. Now let's talk to our second gentleman, the man you think is the congressman up to this point. You may change your mind. Uh, sir, what did you do before you ran for Congress? I was in the Marines in World War II and also in the Korean conflict. Mr. Congressman, as a member of the House, do you get to know big brass in Washington like the President of the United States? I've had breakfast with the President on several occasions. I also played golf with Vice President Nixon. And I made quite a few trips with Secretary Dulles. Now, these, uh, these trips with Mr. Dulles and others might keep you away from Washington. How do you get time to represent your constituents? Well, right now, I'm going to introduce a bill that will give my constituents $200 a month when they reach the age of 60. That ought to get you reelected. Well, not only that, Art. I'm working on a bill, too, that will certainly bring a lot of business to California because I'm going to put the bill in the next hopper and introduce it in Congress that will link a new international highway all the way from California to Alaska. All right, thank you very much. That's our number two guest, the man you pri previously had selected as a congressman. Our third gentleman, what achievement are you most proud of in your career? Well, according to many uh, mothers and fathers in my district, I believe they appreciate my efforts in procuring the uh, hospital, the Birmingham hospital that is, for a school from the government at no cost, mm -hmm. which has been remodeled completely and I believe there's approximately 4,000 students there at the present time. Mm -hmm. Now, Lillian is it? Yes, sir. Lillian from Brooklyn. <coughs> Let's see how sharp an eye an insurance credit gal has. Do you wish to change? Now, you've no. guessed the middleman. I don't wish to change. You're going to stick with him for $1,000 in cash. You're not going to change. Ooh. Huh? <laughs> All right. Let's see how... Uh, any particular reason why you, you are sticking with him? Well, the first gentleman I don't think is in politics. He stuck his neck out too much. All right. <laughs> the second one? You? The second gentleman seems to be more at ease and he's the only one that isn't perspiring. He he's the only one that isn't perspiring. <laughs> He seems to be used to speaking. <laughs> yes, he and the, and the third gentleman? <laughs> and he seems to be more at ease than the other gentleman. Uh -huh. And the third one? I don't know. Uh, well, I can't tell. If, he, if he's perspiring... <laughs> Maybe yet. he is. Maybe he is. I don't know. But I think I'll still stick to the center fella. <laughs> well, let's see. Let's start down the list. Um, over here with the gentleman who, if he perspires anymore, is going to float all of us right out of the studio. Uh, I'm going to tell you something. You have got the hat on the wrong head. Aww. That is not the congressman. The one that you just figured out. So, we drop you down to $250 now, which is quite a jump. Which of these two gentlemen is the congressman for $250? I think the first gentleman. Uh, the first John, will you change hats in here? Mm -hmm. uh, I don't think I got the right one. You don't think you got the right one? I think you're it. <laughs> Do you want to change? Now, look, we're not done yet. You can do whatever you wish. 
Uh, I think I'll take this gentleman. You switch it back over to him. Yeah. <laughs> Something about the way he wore that hat made him look phony. No. All right. Well, he looks, he looks Say, he more looks, of a congressman. He looks like a congressman, yeah. doesn't he? Very distinguished. He's a very handsome fellow. Well, let's see how you've done now. <clears throat> let's, uh, let's start with this gentleman right here. Maybe he is the congressman, maybe he isn't. Would you tell us your name, sir? Earl Sager. Mr. Sager, what do you do? I have a Chevron gas station in the valley <laughs> on the corner of Fulton and Moore Park. <laughs> you have a Chevron gas station down in the valley, and how, how close have you ever come to politics? Not too close. This gentleman uh, is Mr. The second man. I'm Mr. Norman Carroll, and I'm a press agent for Ringling Brothers Barn Bailey Circus. Well, apparently, Norman, you should be in politics because you appeal to the woman voter. How have you ever had anything to do with politics, Mr. Carroll? The only thing I've had to do with politicians is just give them free tickets for the circus. <laughs> very much at ease in his use of show business. Well, now we have each of you, for you two men, a magnificent Magnavox portable television set for the finest reproduction of sight and sound. For your earnest endeavors here tonight and helping us play our game. And evidently, <laughs> you don't look like a politician because your name is... Joe Holt. I'm congressman from Hollywood in the San Fernando Valley. <laughs> and I might say... I didn't ask you. Now, Joe happens to be one of the youngest congressmen in the United States. How old are you, Joe? I'm 32 now, all right? I'm getting old. This is my third term. <laughs> we have for you, since you haven't won either the $1,000 or the $250, oh, dear, we're going to send you on an all-expense-paid trip on United Airlines, the number one radar line in the country, up to the Sahara Hotel in Las Vegas. Oh, well, we're going there next week. All expenses, we'll pay all the expenses. Oh, aren't you? Anything you lose, no. <laughs> and uh, Joe, since you're a congressman and can't accept gifts from constituents without being investigated, every congressman spends a lot of time in smoke-filled rooms. And so we want you to have your own bag of smoke. And there it is. You can open it up. And there comes the smoke. That's what I've always wanted. <laughs> there you are, ladies and gentlemen. People are funny. How well does the average person know his country? Well, people are funny about the country they live in. They may travel from border to border and coast to coast and still not really know much about it. We're going to prove it tonight because we have here an outline of the map of the United States. And I'm going to pay $1,000 in cash if someone can give us the exact location of five principal cities out of ten. Now, it sounds easy, but let's see how it works out. Where is the gentleman chosen from our volunteers tonight? Would you come on, please? How do you do? Your name is? Tony Casas. Tony what? Casas. Tony Casas. C-A-S-A-S. -A -S. Well, now, you volunteered as knowing a lot about the United States, and yet you have a foreign-sounding name. Were you born in this country? Of course. I, no, sir. Where? I was born in Cuba. That's what I know so much about this country. Because the people who live here don't know much about it. They don't know where they have. You know, this is true. Foreigners who come to this country find out more about it than the people who were born here. Just like people in New York, most of them have never been up to the Statue of Liberty. You've been across the country? Yes, I have. Driven uh, from coast to coast? From Los Angeles to Florida about four times. Oh, well, then you do know the United States. What line of business are you in? Traveling salesman? Not quite, sir. Uh, I work, uh, I sell unmentionables during the day. You sell what? Unmentionables. Unmentionables. Wow. Oh. It's lingerie. Lingerie. That's right. Oh. Then during uh, nine hours, I work on Walls Auto Park. You sell lingerie in the daytime and park cars at night? Um, yes, sir. Uh, car jockey. Well, that's a very interesting combination, isn't it? Uh huh. <laughs> Are you a married man? Yes, sir, I am. Uh huh. You have a very charming accent. Who do you remind me of? Desi Arnaz, that's who it is, from Cuba, huh? That's right. Now, you volunteered to tell us about America. This is what's going to happen, Tony. We have circles, 10 cities, and you will have 90 seconds to locate the cities, and if you punch this sword through 
five out of the ten cities, you can have the thousand dollars. Now here's the sword. <laughs> well, it's a dagger. Here you are. And uh, all you have to do is punch five out of ten. That sounds pretty easy, doesn't it? That's right. As I name the city, boom, you punch the sword right through it. And if you get it right in the center of that circle, or any part of the circle, and you get five out of ten in 90 seconds, you get a thousand dollars. Very simple. You all ready? Now, the first thing we do is to put you behind the map. Ah. And Tony, you see back there a black outline of the map without these cities marked. Just the black outline. But Tony, remember, you'll have to use your imagination since now left is right and right is left. Where Florida was on your left, it's now on your right. Do you understand that? All right, now there are 10 daggers back there. You can grab them out of the holsters and pierce the cities. All right, boys, we will now start the clock. Washington, D.C. That's where a fellow follows a shapely figure in a black gown. Washington, D.C. <laughs> well, wait till the Supreme Court hears about this. <laughs> now remember, Tony, your map has been reversed, so be careful. The next is Houston, Texas. Yeah, that's getting warm. Incidentally, if you don't get five out of ten, for each one you do get right, you get fifty dollars. Now, Detroit, Michigan. Detroit, Michigan, where they put the cars together. <laughs> now, remember, Tony, it's reversed. This side over here to your left is the east coast, and that side to your right is the west coast. You sure you've driven across the United States? <laughs> I think he's punching Cuba. <laughs> Denver, Colorado. Denver, Colorado. No, not yet. Albuquerque, New Mexico. Albuquerque, New Mexico. He got it. Now you've got to go on. Since I gave him 30 seconds of explanation when I was worried about it, I'll give you 30 seconds more. Now we'll go real fast. Kansas City. Kansas City. Where was that, right here? I missed it. Atlanta, Georgia. New Orleans. Seattle, Washington. Seattle, Washington, Los Angeles, California. There. Well, ladies and gentlemen, come on out here, Tony. Take a look at that. You got two, Albuquerque, New Mexico, and Los Angeles, California. How did you happen to get Washington, D.C. in the middle of the country? Are you a Republican or a Democrat? <laughs> Well, I guess I dropped to Cien, not United States, when I did. Well, I tell you, you it's, a, it's a tough job. It's a very difficult thing. You have what, what, your locations. What you need is a good compass. That's what I figure you need, Tony. In fact, if you were to start from here to Pasadena, I would give odds of 10 to 1, you'd wind up in the Pacific Ocean. <laughs> so I'm going to give you $100 in cash and the compass worth 25 cents. And this proves that finding cities is like locating girls. They're a lot easier to find if they have pretty maps. You had the wrong kind. Goodbye, Tony. This is Virginia Mayor and Ed Hakim. And next week, they'll try for $20,000 in cash. And would you like a little help? We sure would, Art. Oh, yeah. Here it is. A brand new dictionary, and I'm not kidding, you'll find the $20,000 word in here. It's a five-letter word. Don't worry about any of the longer ones. And actually, the last couple who won $20,000 on this program and who are now engaged to be married found the word in the book that won them the $20,000. So here it is. Go home and study it together. Goodbye and good luck. Thank you. We'll see them again next week. Good night, everybody. Do, 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 do. Ooh, okay.
Sulaco.